Evening all, and welcome back to Kerbalism. We are on our way out of the um, planet, the out of Kerbalism Sphere of Influence. We're about a day away at the moment. Uh, Kerbin is down there, the little the blue dot there. There is the moon. There is Mimus. Or why? Can't mouse over anything else. Maybe because there were updates. Let me have a quick look here. Planet, that's one there. And show names from mouse ever. There we go. Apply. Oh, Eve. Moon. Oh, that's Jewel. That's not Mimus. Right, there's Duna. I don't know where Mimus is then. Let's have a quick look. Mimus is over there. So Mimus is that way somewhere. There's Mimus. Little dot right there. Wow, that's really hard to see. Okay. But um yeah, we are we are about to leave. Well I say about. Speed up time a bit. Uh observation what kind of move oh that's okay. Move five by two is fine. There's no kerbals on that. That's okay. Uh, yep, that's fine. We're gonna hit this one. If here's this one we gotta redirect the craft and do something special. Try and get there. Right, Ooh, let's slow down time here because I want to bring up all our science bits and pieces um, and have a look. Now, radiation looks good, stress also looks pretty good. We've got a couple of couples at 1%, but other than that, they're okay. Stopped. Uh, mystery do no, that's all okay. Right, let's uh, warp to there. And get ready for this switch. Now this will be the first time any Kerbals have left um, Kerbin's Sphere Influence. They've, we've never been out this far. This is the furthest we've ever been away from home. Uh, right now this is the furthest, but we should get another milestone. Uh, if I clear all these, actually. Uh, yeah. Clear all those. Right. We should get another milestone saying we've uh, left. Oh, here we go, here we go. Do, 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 do. And we should see this swap over. He says. Come on. There we go. Boom. We have swapped over. We are now in the sun sphere of influence, not Kerbin's. I'm not sure why it doesn't actually show up Kerbin now, because we're no longer... We didn't get a milestone for it, which was interesting. Um, but we did get... Oh, we are getting a crew report. And that appears to be about it. Which is a little disappointing, if I'm honest with you. I kind of thought we'd get more... Out here. But I suppose this is just counted as space high, isn't it? Not some space high. Which is a... Uh... Yeah, a little, a little disappointing. I'll be honest with you. Flying high and flying low in the sun. Uh, no, that's dumb. So we've got this already. Did we do this already? We might have done. I keep forgetting what I've done. What I've done here. What I haven't. Radiation makes sense. Um. We've got space during that. We've got no magnetosphere of the sun because we can't get close enough for that. That's fine. Telemetry report around the sun. We've done. I th I feel as if we've uh, sent probes out here before, haven't we? Yeah. Transport the stuff back. Although the mystery goo is one that surprises me. Although it's just space high, isn't it? That's all it's all it's counting there. So doesn't matter where. Um, although it is the sun. Mm. And we have a flying high as well. Oh, maybe we could get that on the way back down. We give that a try, I suppose. Uh, let's turn that one off and let's turn the, that one on. So we're getting a different one. Reading. And uh, yeah, okay. So, not as exciting as I expected it to be. But hey ho, that doesn't really matter. 
So we want to get back to Kerbin now, don't we? So how are we going to do that? Well, we need to change our orbit to meet Kerbin again. So we could either push our orbit out that way and hopefully get a... encounter, which you're not going to. Okay. But what about slowing ourselves back down again? That should give us an encounter. Yep, there we go. Where is that encounter going to be? I can't tell. Is it there? Is that an entire orbit away? I don't think that's correct. Hold on. Right, we're on the inside track, so actually we need to go out. What we need to do is we need to... Um, well, we need to... We need to push towards Kerbin, so that is correct, but we need to push towards Kerbin a lot harder than we currently are, and slow down. There we go. There's our encounter. Okay. So let's go back here and see where this is going to be, if we can't get ourselves... A bit closer. Aha, there we go. An encounter with the moon. That's excellent. That's kind of what we want. The moon's going around this way. So that would be coming around the back of the moon. But if I come around the front of the moon the other way, it won't affect us in any real way. Come around the back does. Oh, that's a lot of Delta V. Ooh, actually get okay. coming down like that would be really, really dumb. Um Yeah, that would be really, really dumb. Trying to find out the best way to do it with losing the lowest delta V because we shouldn't need anywhere near that amount to come back again. There we go, that looks better. There we go, so. Right, so let's redo that there and uh, just slow ourselves down. We should get an encounter. There we go, there's one. Whoa. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. Completely by mistake. We get an encounter with the moon, which slows us down enough to put us into an orbit, which is awesome. Wow. Put that down to one meter a second and see. That is, that is quite literally exactly what we have to do. Um, I'll drop this down to 0.10. Yep, it, it, we, we miss it. So that, that is exactly where we have to fire in order to get this correct. And we will encounter the moon. And uh, things will be fine. Let's put it back up to 10 meters a second. Let's go with 5. Hold on. About the best I think we're going to get. So we'll come in, we'll hit that, we'll go around again, we can hit it again, and it will actually shoot us out further. But that's fine because when we actually hit this here, we can do a maneuver to try and keep ourselves. a bit flatter. Ah, see, that's, that's actually uh, throwing us off. There we go. And that will sling us out again, so we don't want that. But there's our first encounter. And that's so, so the red one's our first encounter, so that's where we'll go. And the second time around, we'll end up here. When we actually hit it for the first time, we can choose to break here. But the engines are slowed down as well, and that will give us a bit of a, a boost. We could also maybe...
I mean, if I move that along a tiny amount, it would break everything, wouldn't it? Yeah. But if I did move it along, yeah, we're actually going to get some smaller motions there because we're. That won't work. Yeah, we're getting some smaller. So we'd come in, catch the moon, and then that would be our ray axis, and that would keep us a little bit lower. I'm just trying to get us a bit sort of flatter. But I don't think I can. Yeah, I don't think it's pretty much letting me. Okay. Alright, so let's do this again, shall we? We don't want to encounter this side, we want it the other side if we can, if you'd be so kind. The encounter we want there. There we go. That puts us in some form of orbit. Okay, so we'll be captured by the moon there. That's the maneuver we're going to do. 170 meters a second, barring retrograde. 30 seconds. Okay. Now this is going to be really awkward. I actually kind of want to cut this engine down even further, so I've got far more uh, thrust on it, so let's cut it down to, shall we say, 30%, there we go, Keep retrograde. So I'm going to need a lot of precision here to stop us in exactly the right place, go. Okay. Let's uh, use four times time warp for the majority of it because we can. Yeah, so catching that moon is literally within a a one meter a second window. So, and I am just firing retrograde. I'm not actually firing exactly where we should be. Oh, I might not even actually encounter this properly. Oh, uh, apparently we're not going to encounter it properly. That's interesting. Uh, no, we're not going to encounter it at all. Hmm. What do we miss? Was it because I fired incorrectly here? It may be. Try it. Sorry, that. Oh, we're getting very weird mystery encounters here. Right, that's that's all good. That's all good. Apparently, we have an encounter here. So we're going to have to figure something out when we get there. But where is that encounter? Where is that on the the orbit? Is it very soon? Is it? Uh... Anti-normal. Uh, rendezvous. Does this give me my inclination? I'm trying to... Um, uh, oh, wrong button there. Uh, I'm trying to sort of... Not necessarily brute force this, but... I've got to make it up as I go. Uh, the moon. I can orbit this curve. Bane's angle is point one. Does that change when I... 
Yes, it goes up. Going up and down. Uh, I don't know what the different inclinations are. This is the problem. It's not actually telling me. That's firing down. So, what if we fired radial out? We have got fuel, we are okay for it. It's not ideal, but we have also got refueling options. We've got plenty of Delta V. Um, yeah, I think the problem is that we're so close to Kerbin's orbit, though we're not really now by the looks of it. No, no, we probably are. That we're getting an encounter along the line somewhere, but I can't see it because it's so small. So I don't know if it's over there. I don't particularly want to wait a year for the encounter because our Kerbals are dead. So, so what I'm basically doing is just firing the engine. Aha! There's another encounter. But where is that? Where is that along the orbit? It doesn't actually... The blue line is our orbit. And I don't see the blue line saying it's crossing... Oh, there. There. Is in 1,378 years. Can I set Kerbal as my target? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Okay. The only thing I've got to worry about as well is the engines. How many 18 editions left? Hmm. Uh, maybe I should just fire towards Kerbin. Maybe that's what I should do. Where, where is Kerbin? Yeah, there it is. Uh, let's point retrograde for a moment. And let's have around to get our solar panel some power. Okay. And uh, then let's move up. Let's just fire towards Kerbin. Let's see what happens there. I don't really want my Kerbals to get lost. Four hundred and fifteen days. Now let's see if we can get the closest approach to actually be in front of us. That might help a little bit. We're pretty. Yeah, I think the issue is that we're pretty much on the same orbit as Kerbin currently is, and that's uh, causing us to be. Um, we're slightly in front of it. So I need to push my orbit actually up past it to slow down. In one year now. Hmm. Uh, I think I think this is Wait, 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 wait. So, so saying what I just said, I need to push my orbit past it, which means I need to increase my orbit, which means I need to fire um, right out. I need to fire away from the sun, this way, to push my orbit out this way. But I also need to kind of slow down because I, I'm in front of Kerbin and I want to catch it like here, not in a couple of orbits. So. So let's uh, turn the throttle back up and uh, let's try again, shall we? This will be pushing a little bit that way, so this will be moving out. Ah, here we go, right, get our wrap up this. 
in front of us. There we go. We're going out now. That's what we wanted. Where is that encounter? Where does that happen? In fact, that has already happened. There we go. That's what I needed to do. We were so close to its movement, it wasn't registering properly. Okay. Awesome. Right. Now, if I set the moon as a target... Oh, we are pretty close, actually. Um... Let's see here. I might then drop some more. We want to go. Um, let's do this maneuver node rather than actually find the entrance because otherwise I'm going to uh, waste all my fuel and my burn time. Four hours, okay. Uh, turn off front of you. Let's get these, get these to the reopen. Uh, oh, right click, you can right click on targets to get their um, information toe up. So right click that one to get that, click on that one. And then I can do this here. That's prograde. But what am I trying to do here? Uh, ah, that will give us an orbit, an, an encounter. Okay, there we go. That will give us an encounter with the moon, which will slow us down. Um, yeah, so that will slow us down by the moon because we're coming around in front of it and uh, will get us close. We can get closer. 270. 43. That's a little too close, actually. So maybe not. But let's do that maneuver. Can I straighten that out a little bit? Oh, I can. Awesome. Oh, that's because we're in place with the moon. That's fine. There we go. So that, that'll work. And then when we get to the moon, we can retrograde there and uh, slow down with the moon's help. Um, which will get us closer to... I don't think I kind of want to do that, actually. I probably want to just go around here and fire here. Um, right, let's... Let's do one at a time. Let's do one at a time. Let's... Uh, let's... Uh, do... What am I doing here? So we want to be... I think radial in, wasn't it? I was moving. I can't remember. And I'm kind of doing this on the fly. I've not actually um, like planned. I kind of knew what I was doing going out there and coming back again because I've done it before. But trying to get these encounters and things and using the assist and stuff, I'm doing on the fly. Hence why it's a little bit unknown at the moment. Let's walk over to that. I'm going to use the RCS for this because it's only 5.6 seconds. It's about half our RCS, but that's fine. Oh, actually, we can use the engine. I'll just turn it right down to like. Oh. Wait for the time we finish. Turn it right down to like 3% or something. Uh, 10%. There we go. 9 second burn. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Then we can get an encounter with the moon, and then if we go back round again, we we'll get another encounter with the moon, but it will fling us out into space, which we don't want. Maybe when we get to the moon, we'll slow down a bit and uh, and get closer to Kerbin, because coming from Kerbin, uh, from the moon to the atmosphere, we can survive. 
coming from here down, we will not. We will, we will die very, very, very rapidly, I feel. I don't even know where Kerbin is. There it is, over there. Two, one, go. Back the map screen. And stop, 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 stop. I pushed the wrong button. Eh, that's okay. Provided we're not hitting the moon, which we're not. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. What we could do is we could slow down even more at the moon and then come around Kerbin this way, do a figure of eight. So we're coming to Kerbin the opposite direction. Uh, that would actually help. Coming in, landing this way, um, the planet rotates that way. Come around. Uh, so coming in this way would actually help us because it would slow us down quicker because you're against the planet's gravity. It's marginal. It's not a great deal. That's why you launch this way because it uses less delta V because you're going with the planet so you get the planet's momentum. If you go that way, you've got to attack the planet's momentum and requires more. Um, so taking off anti-clockwise and then landing clockwise makes sense. And it works as well because when, when you look at the, where the KSC is, um, really, you would come in as a space plane over the water and then land there rather than coming over their mountain ranges, which is what most of us probably do. <laughs> okay, let's walk down to the moon and uh, see what we can do. Uh, going down for some reason? Why are we going down? Oh, have we got an alarm coming up? We have our Duna scanner. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's uh. Let's add an alarm here. Uh, through influence change. Boom. There we go. So we know what we're doing there. And let's go and have a look at our Duna scanner. We already have a maneuver node. Okay, so that's fine. So yeah, so this, this is the first craft ever going over to Duna uh, in order to, uh, to scan things. Now I can't remember what beep does. Um, probably something we can't do now. I get here because I'll be honest, I wasn't wasn't reading properly. Uh, beep. Oh, space low. Ah. Oh. Oh, this could give us some very very nice. Uh, data actually uh, why have we got a 9.3 second maneuver there is that to get an encounter with Duna? I think it might be but it's we're no longer getting an encounter with Duna It's only been out here 88 days. We didn't launch this long ago. Um, yeah, so... Okay, so closest approach is going to be 57. I think we were going to figure something out when we were out here, wasn't we? So let's have a look-see. Shall we? Let's see whether we can't change this up a little bit here. Uh, so... Uh, go away, Kevin Longcock. Thank you. You open up. You. So we're 57... 60. Ooh. Ah, there we go, we've got an encounter. Ah. Ah. Awesome. Uh, there is our encounter. If we can't get it a bit. A bit closer, there we go. 13, 13,000. If I do this, we can get even closer, which is kind of what we want to do. We want to kind of be as close to it as we possibly can be. So, let me explain this maneuver node editor better um, for anyone who hasn't used it. It's coming in the last update for Coal Space Program. Uh, if you have a maneuver selected, you can obviously drag out the things here in space and do what you want with them. And that's fine, but it's a little 
annoying to drag it around or you can mouse over and, and use the mouse wheel to change things but they're a bit the quicker you move the mouse wheel the more you do which is a little confusing uh, so if you just click it once and then once again you move small amounts if you scroll it four or five times you'll move massive amounts so that's where this editor comes in here you've got the text editor where you can type in numbers um, so you could literally type in you know i want to fire retrograde or prograde um 10 meters a second and it will do it or you've got the graphical maneuver editor which uh basically allows you to do exactly the same as what you've done here you can click and drag them or you have a scale on the side here where you can set how often uh, how much one mouse scroll adjusts it so right now i've got it set to one meter a second or one one second which is 0.10 meters a second so when I use a mouse wheel on these, it only ever moves one small maneuver at once. Which is absolutely ideal. That's that's really what you want for fine position. And I can turn it up to say 200, and then when I mouse once you'll see it changes so much quicker. There. So very useful, very, very useful to use. You also got two buttons in the center there for moving left and right, which moves your maneuver node along the orbit, forward or backwards. Very, very useful. I would highly recommend using it if anyone isn't because uh, you can turn it down to like really really tiny tiny amounts and then get small maneuvers to get there you go exact polar that's exactly what we want there we go boom so yeah that's pretty much exactly where i want the maneuver to be uh obviously firing the maneuver that's a bit more difficult because uh well getting that to work perfectly is always awkward uh, so the best way obviously is to just turn down your engine um 1.5 percent there we go and that's a 20 second burn and remember by turning down the thrust limiter your engine will burn will produce less thrust so it will burn slower which means you have better control so when you use the throttle here you don't have to use full and and off you can use you know small amounts in between so if you have your throttle set to 10 percent 10% of 1.5 is a tiny, tiny amount, probably less than what um, reaction thrusters do. So you can move this down by like 0 0.01 meters a second every, you know, 10 seconds of moving. You can get exact position how you want to. Um, so yeah, throttling engines are fantastic and uh, I bet lots of uh, space agencies wish they had them because uh, it would make life so much easier. Yeah, right. So let's go over this maneuver. And uh, do this. Uh, we have got everything just auto running, haven't we? we uh, yeah, everything's got research survey. We'll turn that on as well. Don't know why. So everything will just work as and when it's required. And, uh,. And yeah, we can get a very, very small precision burn to exactly where we want it to be. So there we go, fire the engine. And you see it's coming down really, really small amounts, really tiny amounts. And you can see it coming in very gently. If you had the engine at full power, even at 10%, this would come in way faster than that and would be quite awkward to deal with. Uh, for some reason, I missed the maneuver node. I got it slightly wrong by the looks of it. That's fine, because we'll just come in over the south pole instead, like that. There we go. Um, I think that's because I wasn't following the actual maneuver node. I was actually just firing here and not looking at it. So, but we're coming over the south pole because that works as well. It doesn't matter so long as we can get over and we can get into the. Uh, uh, as you hear this has. Um, we're going for Duna. So we want to go over each one of the different biomes. And the best way to do that is via a polar orbit. Because as you're going around on the polar orbit, um, the planet is rotating underneath you. So you'll get different, every orbit will give you a different part of the planet. You'll, you'll scan this sector here, and then you'll scan this one here, and then you'll scan this one here, and so on and so forth. Because although your orbit stands still, the planet is going around underneath you. So that'll work. And then from here, we can get to I can scan that as well. So that'd be awesome and we've got loads of fuel left by looks of it loads loads of fuel left yeah barely used any um structural tube 
I think I put batteries inside that, that was why. Okay. Right. So let's turn the engine back up to well, put it to 100% because might as well. And uh, we will face the sun. Raise the sun. Turn the SS off so we save some power. And uh, then we'll go back to our space plane, I think, and we will bring that to Kerbin, which is all the way over there. But we'll do that in the next episode because uh, time has crept up on us. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope to see you again next time. And uh, until then, as always, have fun. <laughs>